Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to my channel. So it's been a while since I've posted a Paladins news video, but we've finally got some topic of discussion in the realm. Today's video is going to be a hot topic regarding the latest news from the Paladins website, which breaks down the developer update for the 2019 roadmap. In my personal opinion, there are some good points and a lot of bad points in this single article, and I'm personally not too fond of the roadmap they've provided. Anyway, let's get straight into it. So if you've been keeping up to date with the game, you'll be familiar with the recent push of the hunt initiative, which is Evil Mojo's attempt and their internal push towards focusing on hunting down bugs and polishing the game. So hundreds of the bugs have been eliminated at the cost of removing originally planned features for the year, such as clans and other features like that. So let's face it, everyone wants Paladins to be one day bug free, but it sure is taking them a long time to get there. And I'm just wondering at what cost is it going to take to fix this? So let's take a look at the 2019 checklist from the sneak peek at the start of the year and see how much of this has changed. And trust me, it's a lot. So FYI, I've just included some of the items and excluded the ones that are non-measurable, such as the end to the burst meta. So first off, we've got the major updates every month. So this is actually going to be changing to major updates every two months, as they specified in their article. So we've also got six new champions. That's being decreased to four for this year, which is Imani, Atlas, Io, and an unknown frontline champion. Six new maps, which is including three new siege maps. So this one has been decreased to currently two siege maps, which is Shattered Desert, and Bazaar, which is the brand new map released recently. So they said also that they'll be releasing a new battle pass every two months. Now this one still stays the same with the new update schedule. So we've got some new items here that have been cancelled, which is the in-game tournament that's been cancelled, clan wars cancelled, player commendations cancelled, persistent lobbies cancelled, and moving on we've got cross-platform play and progression. This one has actually been completed except for PlayStation 4, but that's all Sony's fault. So on Evil Mojo's side, that's all good. New game modes. So we've actually got one game mode planned for this year. That's still upcoming. And we've also got the revamped in-game item store, which that one is, I believe, completed. So earlier this year, we've also moved to a longer six week update schedule. So to improve the overall quality of the game. And in my personal opinion, that wasn't really a great period for the player base itself. Um, yes, the beloved bugs were being fixed, but that's still an ongoing process even now, which is why we're changing the schedule once again. And the one that I see continuing for years to come. The one and a half months between major updates, in my opinion, was way too long, but I guess it was necessary at the time to eliminate major bugs. So more recently, Evil Mojo attempted the four week update cycle, but I guess that was also too much pressure and they really struggled to hit the quality and crunch times needed to make the high quality content and also test within this time limit. So this leads to rushed updates like the recent Steel Forged update. So four weeks monthly updates was pretty good though. It was a good schedule for the game, I think. Um, also, they were allowing them to alternate battle passes and events every month. So unfortunately, with the most recent news, Paladins is now moving to an eight week patch cycle. You could say people are 50-50 on this. Personally, I don't like it. Um, yes, maybe more time will be spent fixing bugs, but will it really be worth it? In my opinion, this has massive repercussions to the game, and I personally dislike this idea. So let's quickly go through the pros and cons for an eight-week cycle. So pros, um, the first obvious pro is that the game will become more polished. Well, that's um, apparently going to be become more polished. So this will give Evil Mojo more time to test changes and new content before releasing it to the public. It also means more time for them to spend um, with plays in PTS to make changes. So more meaningful updates as well, each patch. So each Paladin's patch will be a major one, which includes a large number of cosmetic skins and gameplay features, such as new game modes. So we've also got cons, however. So it's too long between patches. Every update brings back old players. And I've seen this happen in the past when we had the six week cycles. 
there were a lot of players at the beginning of the cycle when the new patch was released so they'd be coming back for the new champion and things like that or a new event but by the end of the six weeks the game was already so stale that most of the paladins regulars had already stopped playing nightly due to the lack of content i can only imagine how much the player base will drop even further when a patch only arrives every two months so this also means less content for players this means it will take longer to receive champion skins for particular champions and even those gold skins that we only get like one or two every patch that will take far more time to reach um, to get them all for everyone and it also means less events to participate in so less opportunity and chance for your favorite champions to get those skins this will probably also mean less champion releases throughout the year. The developer update also mentions that skin only events perform pretty poorly and player concerns are that these aren't very substantial to justify an update. So as a player who spends a lot of crystals on the game, I actually agree with this argument. Um, all events released in the game should always be accompanied with some sort of new event game mode, uh, possibly a free progression track for minor cosmetics such as avatars and sprays. So this has a lot of value and it really attracts um, more players coming back to play the game. But um, because the majority of players are free to play players, they will only be coming back if there's something for them to achieve or to accomplish. So without this free content or a new game mode, there's literally nothing for free to play players to come back and look forward to. The article also mentions that every bi-monthly update going forward will always receive a major new gameplay feature, being a champion, map, mode, or significant balance. So taking this statement into account, you can actually look at the past few patches, and this is really nothing new. So if anything, it's actually less than what we've been receiving. Um, in the last few patches we've gotten in the past, we've actually been getting a combination of these things such as new champions and new maps all in one. So along the release of a maybe an event for example. So realistically this is nothing to get excited about. Um, they also mentioned that every update, yes every update um, going forward will have a new battle pass. Before you get too stressed out, don't worry because every month Every two months we'll be getting an update. So it's actually the same as this, at the same rate that we're currently getting now. So we currently receive battle passes every second update. So the rate of battle passes really just remains the same. So we'll still be having about roughly 60 days to complete a battle pass. So all right, um, let's move on to bring up the 2019 roadmap. So as you can see, there are only three more updates left in the year, spaced out every two months. So believe it or not, the next patch is not hitting until July, which is an incredibly long time. So I was waiting for the usual patch preview actually, which releases the week after patch live. But now who knows when this will be if there's no patch for another month or so. Um, this means that we will also have to wait ages for the next support champion IO who's been teased over the last month or so to finally hit the game. So in May we received the new Siege Map Bazaar and the Steel Forged Battle Pass. The next major update hits in July and we'll be getting IO as the new champion and the Beach Bash Battle Pass. So we've seen a few skin concepts in this Battle Pass in particular which has been teased by Thunderbrush in the past so it makes a lot of sense that this is coming next. September brings a new game mode, now this one might be possibly a limited time event game mode or the arrival of a new game mode to stay permanently. It could even be the return of payload survival or maybe a new PvE game mode, who really knows. So personally I would love for them to bring back an updated payload because I really miss those old payload levels that were cut from the game. Alongside this game mode, um, we get a battle pass as usual, which is unknown at this point. I'm thinking this might be the, actually the pirate themed battle pass, which they've also teased in the past. The final patch in November brings a new frontline champion. So I'm really happy that this one, about this one, um, even though we've just received Atlas, this might be our Tigron champion or someone new altogether. But as a frontline main, I'm really happy with this choice to see more front lines get picked. So this patch also comes with a battle pass as usual. 
So with this roadmap, I just want to quickly talk about the repercussions that this essentially has on the game. First off, Evil Mojo is a company and they do need to make money to get the staff paid and keep the game afloat. Without the income coming in, the game will eventually just die off. But at the same time, without a player base, the game will also die. So with less events in the year and less skins for purchase with crystals, they would possibly be making a loss in income, but this is evil mojo after all, so their board level staff are not going to be happy with a loss of income. So they're not just going to accept that um, just to be able to fix some bugs. So at what cost will this be to us as the players? Um, in my opinion, this will be a loss of value to what we're already receiving in terms of skins and content. So for example, we might still be getting the normal four skin battle pass, but they might essentially raise the price to 1000 crystals instead of 600. If that's so, that's pretty greedy on their side. So I guess I'm going to be out and so are a lot of paying players. They do however mention additional cosmetics being available for purchase every patch. So just like we had the DLC bunny suit Ceres skin, um, this is going to be bad news for us as well because now actual money becomes a form of currency for the game alongside crystals, even more so than before. And they never really actually discount the DLC um, skins, so it's going to be almost like double dipping plays for crystals as well as real dollars. So in other extremely disappointing news, it also turns out that the community skin contest which was scheduled for around October or November this year has been delayed until the January 2020 patch battle pass. So yes, it's going to be part of a battle pass. And I guess this means because there's four skins, that means the four skin battle pass trend will continue. So probably four skins and four limited edition recolors. Evie's skin has also apparently been delayed and she will not be getting a skin in 2019. Now this is a big news for a lot of people and to be honest to me um, it's actually kind of like a joke because surely even if Evie's skins are being made at a loss they could have dropped her skin as part of some kind of battle pass that already comes with four skins for the 600 crystals but I guess skins are developed months in advance and she just didn't make the cut. That's really disappointing because the event she was supposed to shine in was cut from the game and a lot of people have been waiting on her new skin. Let's not even mention um, the fact that she was disqualified from the community skin contest for this exact reason. And another repercussion of slower patch cycles is the slower release of champions. As I mentioned previously, um, we'll only be getting four champions now this year instead of the six and probably four ongoing from now on so this pretty much puts the game on par with overwatch in terms of champion release rate i'm personally somewhat saddened by this because new new champions were the biggest draw of paladins and it's the reason why new and old returning players come back to the game to test these new champions out so i thought six was a perfect amount of champions in one year but four is like really just right on the border but hey i just wanted to say that i do love the bug fixes as much as the next person so i really hope that the slow release of new content doesn't negatively affect or kill the game by pushing away its player base the constant updates in the past has kept this game fresh literally every month but now i can't help but dread the staleness of bi-monthly updates so two months between patches, um, will the game even survive without a patch for two months? I can't really think of any other free-to-play game that updates only every two months just because they can't fix their bugs. Although the hunt has somewhat improved the game, I really do hope Evil Mojo can clean it up much more without the cost of losing their player base. So as optimistic that I as I am about Paladins, um, as much as I want this game to flourish and succeed, I just can't see it getting to the same polish as a game like Overwatch, especially with the reveal that the game really is running on spaghetti code. Um, it also doesn't help that most of the original developers have now left the game, So, but I do hope Evil Mojo proves me wrong. So after all, that's why I still continue to support the game, make Paladin's YouTube content, and buy crystals. So it's sad to see that a lot of content 
is being thrown out the window for this year, but let's all hope the bugs are finally killed off in the game so that they can finally focus on quality content in 2020. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys next time. Oh.